You're watching The Legal Breakdown. So Glenn, some surprising news here. We've got three indicted fake electors who now claim that they were acting on Trump's behalf at his urging or at the advice of his attorneys. Uh, one of the fake electors claimed to be acting, quote, at the direction of the president of the United States. Are they previewing their defense here? You know, they sure are previewing their defense. It's no surprise that some of the lesser players, right? You have different tiers here. You've got, you know, the big fish, the big orange blowfish himself, Donald Trump. He's the top dog. He is, you know, essentially the mob boss. Then you've got some other pretty important players right under him, Mark Meadows and Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell uh, and some of the others, John Eastman. Um, and then you have all of these fake electors, you know, by all accounts, they are smaller fish. They are lesser criminal players. No doubt, no doubt they were part of a criminal scheme. They were part of the criminal enterprise to overturn the results of the presidential election in Georgia. But frankly, you know, that's not really who put democracy at risk writ large. So they are certainly previewing their defense. And it's no surprise that we're starting to hear from them, at least in motions filed by their lawyers that they're going to try to put this on Donald Trump. Look, he was directing us. His people were directing us. And, you know, given that they're starting to sing that tune, I think D.A. Fawny Willis is beginning to see how she can meet the challenge of those kind of claims. Now, is what we're seeing right now in any way admissible as evidence against Trump? You know, it's a great question because you would think when an attorney put something in a court filing, like my client says he or she was directed by Donald Trump to do these horrible things. That sounds like a big deal, right? But here's the thing. The sins of the lawyers are not always the sins of their clients. Just because a lawyer puts something in a court filing in furtherance of a legal argument that they're making, it's not the same as if it's coming right out of the mouth of the client, because anything that comes out of the mouth of a defendant is admissible against that defendant at trial. The devil's really in the details. When you look at the things that are in these court filings, these legal pleadings, these briefs, these motions, to see what the attorney said and whether what the attorney said might come back to haunt the client. So, you know, this is something that will develop as time goes on. Okay, so so at this point, I mean, we don't have hard and fast evidence against Trump just by virtue of these court filings that were put forward by the attorneys of these fake electors. But when does it become a problem for Trump? Yeah, so it becomes a problem in a couple of ways. If we were to see in a court filing, Brian, something like, you know, on such and such a date, Donald Trump told my client, and I quote, sign your name to those fake elector certificates, close quote. Okay, now we've got some really dangerous, damaging, incriminating evidence against Donald Trump. Here's where it becomes, I think, most, uh, most directly dangerous for Donald Trump if these fake electors start flipping. And I have a feeling some of them will. They're not going to want to go to jail for, participate, for participating in a scheme that was conceived by Donald Trump and John Eastman and Kenneth Cheesebro and Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani. So it would not surprise me to see this case go from 19 indicted defendants down to maybe 15, down to a dozen, down to six or eight. Because, you know, once these fake electors saw their names, you know, in black and white, on the wrong side of the V state of Georgia versus the named fake electors, it got very real for them. And if I had to bet my buck, I'm not a high roller, $1 is my betting limit. I would bet my buck on multiple of these fake electors pleading guilty. And then if they take the stand against Donald Trump and they provide evidence that you're darn right, Donald Trump was directing this criminal scheme, that's when it gets very dangerous and damaging to Donald Trump. Look, aren't they already putting their cards on the table? Like if they were willing to say that they acted at Trump's behalf on Trump's, you know, at Trump's direction, why wouldn't they also just be willing to cooperate since it doesn't look like they're trying to protect Donald Trump anyway? You know, they may be. They may be sort of auditioning for Fawny Willis through these uh, court filings. Um, you know, you would think in the ordinary course of business, that Fawny Willis would have already invited these fake electors, these lesser defendants, 
for a sit down, for a debriefing under a, an immunity for a day letter so they could speak openly without their words being used against them. Now, it looks like, you know, Georgia does it its own way. And that's not the way every jurisdiction does it. They have some unique rules to Georgia. Um, so it may very well be that Fawny Willis wanted to start strong, wanted to indict these people, and then wanted to say, okay, now that you are potentially in trouble concretely by virtue of being indicted, you want to sit down and talk with us? So it may be that these negotiations are ongoing and we just don't know about it. No. They're also trying to have this case removed to federal court. And so they're claiming that because Donald Trump was a federal figure as the president of the United States, that this is now a federal issue. Do you think the judge is going to buy that? No, uh, there's, there's a legal term for an argument like that. It's called silly. The law of removal says that if you are a federal officer, you can file to have your case removed and the judge will decide whether to grant you an evidentiary hearing. The judge has granted an evidentiary hearing for Mark Meadows at this point, maybe others, but I know one has been granted. It's going to be held Monday for Mark Meadows to see whether his case should be removed from Georgia state court and be transferred to federal court. It shouldn't, and I predict it won't be, but there will be an evidentiary hearing. But there is no law. There is nothing under the law of removal that says, oh, by the way, if you rub shoulders with a federal officer, or if you sign fake elector certificates at the direction of a federal officer, then magically you're converted into a federal officer for the law of removal. Doesn't work that way. These, the, the removal petitions that are being filed by state, Georgia state folks who are indicted, will I predict be summarily rejected by the federal judge without even ordering an evidentiary hearing. Well, to that point, you know, we we now have five Trump co-defendants who've sought removal in this case from state court to federal court. Uh, is that answer going to come on Monday? And once we do get an answer, does that answer apply to all of the co-defendants who are seeking to have this thing removed to the federal court system? You know, not all of these defendants who are attempting to have their cases removed from state court to federal court are created equal. Mark Meadows was a federal officer, right? So he has a straight faced claim that, listen, my case ought to be removed because I kind of fall under the law of removal. I think he's going to lose at the end of the day after the evidentiary hearing. But then Rudy Giuliani, well, he wasn't a federal officer at all. He was a lawyer to a federal officer, the president. So I think his claim is not really a straight faced claim. But I don't know what the judge is going to do with it. The judge might want to go with what we call belt and suspenders, right? Make sure that even if he is not really entitled to an evidentiary hearing, the judge may say, I'm going to give him one anyway, and then I'm going to reject it on the merits, on the evidence. But, you know, as you work your way down the removal totem pole, the Georgia state folks, I don't think, have any claim. So I don't know that one evidentiary hearing once a judge rules, for example, in Mark Meadows' case, will necessarily resolve all the other case. It's going to be kind of a case-by-case -case thing. We're going to have to see you know, what the judge does, whether the judge grants a hearing, or whether the ju judge just rejects it summarily and says, you know what, you don't even rise to the level of warranting a hearing. Okay, well, we'll leave it there. Obviously, a lot to look forward to as we get answers to, to the big question right now, which is, is this case going to be removed from the state court system to the federal court system? So uh, if you want to stay on top of this stuff, as soon as it breaks, make sure to subscribe. The links are right here on the screen. I'm Brian Teller Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.